Sing the mighty power of God is not page 188, it is page 288. So please uh, note, I sing the mighty power of God is page 288. And we also welcome to our pulpit today Bill Feminsky. He is retired from the YMCA in Uniontown, and even though he's retired, he is uh, working toward his um, layman's program through the Presbyterian Church like Jeff Smith did, and he mows lawns, so if you need your lawn mowed, see him after church today, and he's also teaching phys ed at St. John's School, so he has a few little things going on. We're very glad he found time today to be with us. So please make sure you welcome him. If you will please stand. Let us give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name making known his great deeds among the people. Friends, let us worship the Lord. Amen.
in mercy. Blessed are all who wait for the Lord. In faith, let us make our confession to God. Let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we lower our heads before thee. We confess that we have too often forgotten that we are God. Sometimes we carry on our lives as if there is no God at all. For these things we ask for forgiveness. In the name of Jesus, we offer this prayer unto thee. Bible tells us in Joel chapter 2, verses 12 through 13. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, rendering your heart and not your garments. For God is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. prophets who I have not sent, says the Lord. In our reading of Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 23 through 29, we read of God's anger of false prophets. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places? so that I cannot see them, says the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord. I have heard what the prophets have said, what prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart. They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for long. Let the prophet who had a dream tell the dream. But let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer, 
breaks the law in pieces. I guess it makes sense that sometimes the hymns that I think of are reflected in the Bible readings. And today, when I read Psalm 92, verses 1 through 5, it reminded me of the song, How Great Thou Art, and it only reminded me of that because of the last verse. So let us read together, please, Psalm 95, verses 1 through 5. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, and to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your works. At the works of your hands I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. And once again, here we go, I think of the hymns. With this reading of Hebrews, I think of the hymn, Faith of Our Fathers, with the words, Faith of Our Fathers, living still, in spite of dungeon, fire, and swords. The reading from Hebrews reminds us of examples of what faith can do, and the reading reminds us of great faith of leaders and great faith of prophets, and of the fire, dungeons, and the swords, in spite of their faith, that they endured. So we're reading from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 29 all the way through chapter 12, verse, verse 2. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were all drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fires, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mockings and floggings and even chains and imprisonments. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, prosecuted, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside 
every weight and the sin that clings closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken a seat at the right hand of God, at the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. And we are now glad to have with us Bill Kaminsky to talk with us. Well, thanks for giving me the opportunity to uh, share God's Word with you and to worship with you uh, today. As Sally says, uh, or said, I'm uh, in the, the lay pastor training program through the Red Stone Presbytery. Uh, so I'm a pastor in training. Uh, and I guess we're all, as Christians, in training. Uh, God is continually working in our lives uh, to help us grow closer to Him be and to do all that qualities call us, call us to be and do. Um, make sure I have my schedule here, so follow along the schedule. Um, let me offer a, a word of prayer as if we go into the children's message and then and the sermon. Heavenly Father God, be with each one of us to hear, to receive, and to do your word. We thank you for your word that you've given us, that all scripture is given by inspiration of you, God, and that you've given it to us to point our way to Jesus, our Lord and Savior, to teach us how to live lives of honor and please to work by you, Lord, to help us through the trouble, troubles, troublesome times that we all face. To speak with me as I speak, let your Holy Spirit guide and lead all of us. Let your Holy Spirit guide my words. And we pray and ask us all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Okay, for the youth and children, because we have a, a couple out there, um, the title is Anything is Possible. So it goes on with our uh, sermon message about, about faith. And this is from uh, Joshua chapter 10, verses 13 through 14. It said, The sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since a day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. It says, Every day the sun comes up. Every day the sun goes down. That's what we're used to. That's because the earth rotates, so the entire earth gets some sun. If the earth stopped moving, it would always be night on one side of the world, and it would always be daytime on the other side of, of, of the world. Can you imagine playing in the dark all the time? Or going to bed with the sun still shining through your windows? Once God stopped the earth for a man named Joshua. Joshua needed an extra long day to defeat the, his enemies, and so God provided that. The Bible is full of amazing stories like this, and they are all true. God can stop planets, move, move oceans, make animals talk, and change the heart of any person. With God, anything. <laughs> is possible. We know God does great things in, in his word that he's given us. He tells us about the great things that he, he had done, uh, where he created all things visible and in, invisible, and he did it out of nothing. He spoke in the words everything of his creation. We know that Jesus 
when he was here on earth, raised Lazarus from the dead. Jesus himself was raised by God from the dead. So the impossible, it all can be done through our faith in the Lord. That's what we're, our lesson in scripture is about today. So let us pray. Dear Lord, strengthen our faith that we may do and be all that you've called us to be and do. We thank you that you are a God in which nothing is impossible, that you can do all things, that you are in control, that your love is unconditional and is perfect and never ends. We thank you for your love, for your mercy. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for us, that by trusting in him, we may be saved and have eternal life for our Lord. Thank you for this message. We ask your blessing on each of our youth today. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for coming up. Here, our lesson today, our message is the race of faith. It's based on the scripture from Hebrews chapter 11, which is commonly called the the faith, Hall of Fame. There's stories of many people how through their faith God has worked in their lives to do great and marvelous things. So we start, what is faith? It tells us in Hebrews chapter, chapter 11 verse 1 that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So if we already have something, we don't live by faith in, in that instance. Faith is for our hopes, for what we need help with, something that has not yet occurred or happened, that we put our faith in the Lord. Faith is trusting and relying and depending on the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's trusting God's Word and that believing that everything that is in God's Word is true, that God will back up all His promises that are in the Word of God. It's trusting God to help us through our trials, our tribulations. You know, sometimes we get an escape where God provides an escape around the troublesome times. Sometimes, though, we have to go through, but God has promised to be with us as we go through those trials and temp temptations. You know, God told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage, be not frightened, Neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So wherever we are, we know that God is with us, that he will take care of us. Just as he was with Daniel, when Daniel was in the, thrown into the lion's den, den, for his faith in the Lord, that he stopped the mouth of the lions, that they did no harm to Daniel. Remember, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that because of their faith in the Lord, they were cast in to the fiery furnace, but no harm came to them. Their clothes were just as they were when they went into the fire as when they got out of the fire. God was with them. And you remember there was a fourth person there in there. Three of them were thrown in the fire, but there were four in there. We commonly think that Jesus was there with them in the fire, protecting them and taking care of them. So again, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's trusting that God will back up what he says in his word, that we can count on him no matter what we're facing, that he is greater than everything, that everyone that we, we will ever face. 
Secondly, we want to talk about the importance of faith. In Hebrews 11.6, God's word tells us, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those who come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So it says, but without faith is impossible to please God. It doesn't say because you went to church every Sunday. It doesn't say because you gave so much money to God. It doesn't say that because you were good or that you did this or you didn't do this that, that you please God. It says by faith we please God. Faith is key, is vital to us and to our lives and to our relationship with the Lord. It doesn't mean that those other things, attending church, tithing on a regular basis, doing the work of the Lord, doing the right things, being obedient to God's word, it doesn't mean that those things aren't important. But it says, by faith, is impossible without faith is impossible to please God by faith in the in Hebrews chapter 11 it talks about and it gives many instances where it says by faith something happened in the lives of these people that trusted in the Lord it gave some examples there you know one is that as the nation of Israel was coming out of Egypt, they were fleeing the Egyptian army coming back after them. And they went through the Red Sea. And then the Egyptian army, when they tried to go through, they were drowned. The water over, overtook them. So by faith, that happened to them. It says in, in Hebrews that by faith, that the as they circled for seven days around Jericho, that the walls of Jericho would fall. You think, you know, Israel's going into the battle, but all they did was walk, march around the city of, of Jericho for seven days. They didn't do anything, but they were trusting in the Lord. They were acting out in, in obedience what the Lord told them to do. And then we know that the walls of Jericho caved in because of their faith by faith. And then we use the final example, by faith Noah. Noah was building this big ship to protect him and his family and all the animals that, that would be saved through the coming flood. And we have to remember that in, at this point in history, it had never rained before. So God's telling Noah that this flood is coming, that it had never rained. They had never seen rain, but yet Noah's building this big boat for what? Probably all the neighbors and all the people around are saying. But God had the purpose of why he was building that. And of course, Noah and his family were saved. By faith, we are saved. Not by deeds of love, not by, by our works. You know, if we rely on our works, we're going to fail. Despite our best intentions, even if we have a strong will, we know that we are all sinners. It tells us in Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So Ephesians 2, 8, 9 tells us, for by faith, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that, not of yourselves, is the gift of God. Something we receive, the gift. Okay? The gift of God, lest anyone should boast. So if we're doing any boasting, we should be boasting about what Jesus Christ did for us. The 
perfect life that he lived when he was here on earth. His death to pay the penalty for all of our sins. His resurrection to win victory over Satan, sin, and death. That we, as we trust in Jesus, will know that one day that we will be in the presence of the Lord because of our faith in Jesus Christ. By faith we are made right with God. Romans 3.22 tells us, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. Just before that, in Romans 3.20, it says, For by deeds of the law, no one will be, just, will be saved or, or will be justified. Only through our faith in Jesus are we made right with God. Not by what we do again, but of what Jesus has done for us. By faith, God provides for us. It tells us in Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. So as we take all of our concerns, our problems, even our sins, as we take them to the Lord, confess them to the Lord, we trust that he will work on our behalf. It says, do it with thanksgiving, believing that God will act that he will bring about what is needed in our life as he heals us, as he delivers us, as he saves us. And again, there's all those by faith statements in Hebrews chapter 11, that by faith, God acts and does various things for his people, for those who trust and believe in him. So how do we go about living by faith? And that's where we come into the um, Hebrews chapter 12. The, the verses there. Again, we'll reread that. Uh, verses 1 and 2. He, Hebrews chapter 12. It says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and venture of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and then sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So it starts out, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, not speaking of all the people in Hebrews chapter 11 who live by faith in the Lord and what the Lord did for them because of their faith. But it says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. So we, we pray to the Lord to help us, to strengthen us through our problems, through our trials. Those weights are the problems, the circumstances in life that we face on a daily basis. Maybe it's health problems, maybe it's financial problems, maybe it's relationship problems. Um, whatever the case may be, we put our faith and trust in the Lord, and he will act on our behalf. He will do what his word says he will do. And then it says, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. You know, the title of our sermon was The Race of Faith. And it's not so much a race, but it's the enduring, the persevering that we do because our faith is a lifetime thing. 
all the way from when we first trust in Christ as our Lord and Savior, all the way to when we are in the presence of the Lord because of our faith in Jesus Christ. So it's an endurance event. You, know, you think of a sprint like a 40 yard dash, a 100 yard, yard, yard dash or sprint compared to a marathon, 26.2 miles of running, or an Ironman triathlon where they swim 2.4 miles and bike 112 12 miles and then run a full 26.2 marathon after that. Those are the things where you persevere, where you endure through. And that's what our life of faith is. It's an endurance event. That day by day, one day at a time, one moment at a time, we live by faith and obedience in the Lord. Trust and obey, as the song says. Trust and obey the Lord and what he's commanded us to do. And then, looking unto Jesus, that is the key of this passage, looking unto Jesus. And Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We have to put our faith and trust in him. It's important of who we put our faith and trust in. You know, we can trust in ourselves, we can trust in money, we can trust in others, we can trust in power, but only when we trust in Jesus Christ will it last, will it hold up, because we know that he overcame it all for us through his death and resurrection. You know, Jesus' final words on the cross as he died for us, to pay the penalty for our sins, was, it is finished. Jesus did everything that was needed so we could become right with God, that we could be saved, that we could have an eternal relationship with the Lord, that we could be in the Lord's presence. In Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 5, you know, it tells about the new heaven, the new earth, and that how there will be no more tears, no more crying, no more pain, that God will be our God and we will be his people. What a great promise that is that God has given us. To live by faith, we need to humble ourselves. It says in 1 Peter 5, 6, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. We need to be humble. Initially, we need to be humble when we trust, put our faith in Christ as our Lord and Savior. We have to realize that there's nothing that we can do on our own that will save us. We are dependent fully upon Jesus Christ for our salvation. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9, Paul was talking to the Lord about a thorn in the flesh. We don't know exactly what that thorn in the flesh was. It could have been a sin area in his life. It could have been a physical ailment or condition could have been something emotional, but it was something that was plaguing and keeping humble Paul so that he would put his trust in the Lord and keep his faith and trust in the Lord. But Jesus told him, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And then Paul says, I will all the more gladly vote that the power of Christ may rest upon you. So when we admit that we are weak, that we are in need, that we need the Lord, that's when we're at our strongest. Because it says, His power is made perfect 
and I, weakness. Second Corinthians 12, 9. And then in Galatians 2, 20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, I have been crucified with Christ. That, that symbolized in the immersion baptism. I know in the Presbyterian Church we don't do much in the uh, immersion baptism. But when a person gets um, baptized in, say, a body of water, as when John the Baptist did it, uh, he laid them down under the wa water, and then when they come back up, they're dying to their sins when they go under. They're coming alive in Jesus Christ as they come up to a new life, to be a new person. Tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has gone. Behold, the new has come. In Christ, we are new people. We have the potential to be all that God created us to be. To fulfill the purpose, the plans that he has for us. But it takes faith. It takes obedience. It takes, again, that endurance, that perseverance throughout our life to put our faith in the Lord. And since Christ now comes to live in me in the person of the Holy Spirit, and I now live my life by faith in Jesus Christ. And then next, we run with endurance and perseverance. Again, that long race, not just a sprint. And it's not all over when we place our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's the starting point, not the end point. That's the start of our faith walk with the Lord when we trust Jesus to be our Lord and Savior, when we trust in his death and his resurrection, that we may be saved. That is our start of our faith walk. And from there on, day by day, moment by moment, we live by faith in the Lord. It tells us in Luke 9, 23, that we are to deny ourselves, to take up our cross daily, and follow Jesus. Deny ourselves. So humble ourselves, deny ourselves that it's not to our glory, it's to the Lord's glory. And to take up our cross daily, whatever problems, circumstances, situations we're dealing with, to follow the Lord, to trust in the Lord, to rely upon Him. In the book of Revelation, in the first in the in chapters two and three. It talks, or a, a letter is written to each of the seven main churches at that time. And he tells in each letter, Jesus, of course, revealing this to John, what those churches are doing right, what they're doing wrong, where they need help. But at the end of each one, he gives these, but to he who overcomes statements. I'm going to read a couple of them. I won't read all seven, but it says um, in, in uh, chapter 2, verse uh, 7, or, or verse 8, I guess it is, uh, verse, verse 7. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And then to the next church, he says in chapter 2, verse 11, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. So at the end of each letter, he gives us. First, he tells them, 
he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is, is telling him. We should be open on a daily basis. We should ask for wisdom and understanding. It tells us in James that um, if we lack wisdom, to ask God and he will give it to us. So we rely upon the Holy Spirit to speak to us, to lead us, to guide us daily on how we should live our life. And the promise that he gives will, will come about. And then finally, the start of our faith walk. We talked a little bit about this a little bit ago. That is the point where we place our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So if you've never done that, if you maybe have backslidden and fallen away from the Lord, you were close to the Lord, and now you don't read his word on a regular basis, you don't spend time in prayer, you're not listening to what God has for you, you're not relying fully upon Jesus Christ. You know, it's, it says in God's word, we walk by faith, not by sight, in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. That we don't go by our circumstances, by our fears, by the problems that we're facing, but we go by our God, who is greater than everything and everyone. We rely upon him. So our faith walk starts when we realize that we are sinners, that we can be saved only through Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. So what we need to do is confess our sins. It says in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, that God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then we need to repent. Repent is turning away from our sin and turning to God, to Jesus Christ, putting our full trust upon him. In Mark 1, 15, Jesus is preaching and he tells them, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe in the gospel or the good news of Jesus Christ. And then finally, we receive you know, in that Ephesians chapter 2 verse, it talked about salvation is a gift. It's not something we earn. It's a gift that we receive. And so we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord, as our Savior. We trust fully upon his death, the pain of penalty for all of our sins. So we are right with God. And that we can be saved. And he, he then gives us the Holy Spirit to walk with us, to empower us day by day. But we have to surrender to allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us each day. Because we still have our old sinful self, our fleshly self desires that we can go after. So we need to surrender to Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit each day that we can walk with Him. And then finally, it says in Romans 10, 13, for all, for whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And that's how we're saved, as we call upon the Lord, trusting in Jesus and his perfect sacrifice to cover all of our sins. So we, we through this lesson, what faith is, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's a vital, our faith is vital. It says, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. And then we can live a life of faith as we look unto Jesus, as we trust in Jesus, rely upon Jesus, not ourselves. And then we run with endurance the races set before us, getting rid of or giving over to the Lord our sins, our problems, our circumstances. And you know, when we accept Christ, that doesn't mean that we're not gonna have problems anymore. We might even have more problems because Satan tries to attack us, take away our peace, our joy. You know, it says in John 10:10, 10, 10, 
the thief, meaning Satan, can go and can steal and kill and destroy. Jesus says, but I have come that they might have life and might have it abundantly. So put our faith in Christ, live day by day by faith and obedience in the Lord. Trust and obey. Let me close in prayer. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for your word and we thank you that we can count on your word. We thank you for the opportunities in this country to gather together, to read your word, to hear your word, to study your word, to praise and worship you, Lord. We know that in many countries, especially in the Muslim countries, that we could not be doing this. That if we were doing it out in public, that we could be put in jail, we could even be killed for our faith in the Lord. Thank you for the opportunity you've given us in this country to read and study your word and hear the messages that you have, Lord, for us. Teach us to live by faith, not by sight. Help us just to rely and trust upon you, God, but also have the courage to step out in faith to you, to do the things you've called us to be and to do. Lord, we love you. We thank you for loving us. Be with us and guide us in this coming week. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Okay, now we respond to God with our affirmation of faith. If you please stand and join me in reading the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now our hymn, number 361, How Firm a Foundation.
Lord. Lord, teach us to always offer a heart of pure thanksgiving and praise in all our daily experiences of life. Teach us to be joyful always, to pray continually, and to give thanks in every circumstance. Amen. Uh, and we'll now go to the Lord in prayer. 
uh, for the prayers of the people. I have some re requests here. Uh, we pray for dear Heavenly Father God. We pray for each of these people that you be with them, that you take care of them, that you love them and comfort and encourage them. We pray for Joe, who is traveling. We pray for Alice and Jim. We pray for Dave Vindovich. We pray for Peggy. We pray for Buffy and family. We pray for Noreen, for Julie, for Jean, and for Dennis. We pray for Ron. We pray for Jody, Judy, and Greg. We pray for Paul. Stephanie and Emily, <clears throat> excuse me, Emily, we pray for Billy, Bobby, Bill, and Eve. And for each of these concerns, Lord, we know you tell us in 1 Peter 5, 5 7 to cast, cast all our cares on you, Lord, because you care for us. We're putting each of these concerns, each of these people, we're giving them over, Lord, to you, asking you to do great things in their life, bring healing where healing is needed, encourage where encouragement is needed, comfort where comfort is needed, strength and faith and wisdom where that is needed. As our youth go back to school, we ask that you watch over and protect them. Be with the teachers to guide and help and strengthen them. Lord, we, we just, again, thank you that you are a great and a good and all-powerful God. We take each of these concerns to you and ask you work your will, your purpose, your plan in each of them. And we know that as it says in Romans 8, 28, we know that everything God works for good for those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. And we pray this all in Jesus' holy name. And let us now pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And I'll give number 288, 288.
get ready to go out for this this week. Uh, we again help us, Lord, to live by faith, not by sight. Not to let our problems, our circumstances hinder us from being and doing all that you've called us, Lord, to be. You tell us in Romans 12, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. And you ask us to be living sacrifices that are holy, pleasing, and acceptable to you. That's what we want in our lives and for this week. We pray and we ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.